All right, our friend talk with Payaza Lisufi, the MEC of Education in Gauteng, continues. He's also a deputy chairperson of the ANC, but we're not going to have time to go into uh, that stuff, maybe, uh, maybe towards the end. Come in. What's happening on social media there? Well, I know you've got plenty to get through, but the questions are coming in thick and fast. Let's start on WhatsApp for now, saying from Apollo Kwane Tapendas here, saying shame on South Africa for making it difficult to access a mere basic education. How dare schools like Hora School Petersburg, Love School Petersburg, still use Afrikaans as a medium of access? Denial and nothing is done. Often people asking this question about some schools. Mahoba here from Centurion saying, JJ, please ask the MEC what actions are they taking as a department against the bogus backyard run schools around Houting? <laughs> Anonymous here saying, please ask the MEC when are we moving to have one matric board where we'll see Malusi merge with the independent matric board where all our grade 12 learners um, will obviously write public or private school will write the same paper. Mm. More well, from Alex here, bringing up something we often um, hear from viewers whenever we speak about education is disabled students. So I'm um, saying that I'm a per li person living with disabilities, and ever since the interview, um, Mr. Panyaza hasn't mentioned anything about lack of special schools. We have a crisis, we don't have enough special schools. He mentions five star schools. How will he rate the Kutula school? Um, we as people living with disabilities, we're overlooked, JJ. Even yourself, you don't ask the MEC about us. That's why we, we take your questions. I'm um, speaking about each disability needing their school separately and saying that, Panyaza, we need bursaries for special schools. That's what we need to do as people living with disabilities. And let's take a look at a final WhatsApp now from Cape Town. M. Chui here saying, JJ, Panyaza is fantasizing. Colleges are a trap for our learners. They get frustrated when they are there. Only private colleges are working and they are unaffordable. So not a good note there, but I know you've got plenty to get through, JJ, so yeah. it's back to you. <coughs> All right. Thank you very much. Come in. Thank you for telling us what people are saying there. Quickly, special schools. Just, 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 just address that, uh, what, what is happening there in terms of special schools. Well, we're making meaningful progress there. Uh, when we came with learners that were on the waiting list to be part of the special schools, that waiting list was uh, sometimes uh, three to four years uh, just to wait to get a school. We've reduced that to 18 months. Uh, it's still a lot. Uh, we, we are working around the clock to ensure that uh, every learner that wants to go to a special school, they, they must get access immediately. So we are quite convinced. The schools that we've built, we've built lots of schools, even in the townships where there were no special schools yeah. in the township. In so we have built three. I know in Tebisa. Okay, ask about Ukutula schools. No, Ukutula is Ukutula. one of our beautiful schools, actually. Yeah, so uh, would that be five star? It, it, it is abnormally five star, actually. Abnormally? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's something yeah. that we are proud of. Unfortunately, we've got the runnings with the municipality uh, because of uh, some bylaws, but it's a beautiful school. It's a school where, JJ, we, we, we have what we call a motel inside the school. So if your child is disabled and you want to visit a child for the weekend, you don't have to go to Sentin and book for a hotel and uh, go there and, and, and see your child. You stay in a motel within the school and you can cook for your child and the child can spend the weekend with you in a very nice finished yeah. room. So those are the things that we've introduced at Noctula for learners with disability and it assisted us to absorb a lot of learners. It's just unfortunately, uh, as I said, we had some runnings with Ndate uh, Mashaba, uh, Coach yeah. Johannesburg, uh, but we'll, we'll get it right and I think we'll... But Uh, actually, in Gauti, yeah. uh, we've done very, very well, if I have to say it. All right. Let's, let's get into, I think there were, there, were, there were one or two other uh, areas. Okay, I can't see my own hand right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, the, the issue of, of, of uh, uh, medium of instruction, I think that the Afri Forum thing at some point also talked about that. I think one of the things that they were saying there is, at, at, in this day and era, can we have people who, uh, schools that insist, in fact, there was a, uh, the school that they wrote to me, and I, 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 I'm going to forward you that email. It's a long story, but I know that one of the things there was, there's a school, as we speak, that insists that kids must, 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 must study Afrikaans and English only, to the exclusion of the other languages. I thought that was uh, ruled out long ago as illegal. It's not. Uh, it's a compromise that I don't know how to say about those people that negotiated the the South African Schools Act and yeah. uh, some of the laws that were passed. I, I really believe it was unfortunate. What it states, and the intention were clear and were brilliant, yeah. uh, but it assumed that the parents are reasonable people. 
Mm. You know, it says when you want to introduce a new language, you yeah. call a parents meeting yeah. and parents vote yeah. and agree to a language. <laughs> but in a, a school where people speak only one language, yeah. do you think they will vote to add another language? They won't. They yeah. won't. And that's why we are stuck. <laughs> So you need to persuade them and say, check the demographics has changed, change the language, and they take you to court and the court. I mean, you know, there was a school called Overval in the Val. I even lost the case at the Constitutional Court to say, no, but it's the decision of the school. It's not what decision, yeah. MEC. So we are stuck in that compromise. Uh, and I really feel that now that there is a window to change the law, uh, as Gauteng, we are going very strong uh, towards Meiji Mutsecha to say, this law must be changed. Yeah. Uh, Yes, the school must still decide, but the community must play a role in yeah. deciding as well. And that's where we think that will we'll fix the uh, scenario. So it don't well, belong. Like, uh, those that are going through this pain, uh, uh, we are pushing it. It's going to be, uh, there are going to be public participation in Parliament on uh, aging parents to, to participate. Uh, and participating in Twitter is not participating in Parliament process. Yeah. They must participate in this process so yeah. that we can change this law. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, safety at schools. Kids stabbing each other, dying at you know, school grounds. What's going on? Uh, I'm not sure in which particular conversation, but people have raised the issue that says, or in fact, I think just in a yeah. conversation with Cossas. I don't know that you saw it, but I had a president of Cossas here who, you know, had scathing things to say about no security at school. So I've got somebody there with a, 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 a don't keep yeah, <laughs> you know, don't at a school, and these kids carry guns there. I mean, it's, it's hopeless. Uh, at least the, the picture that Cosas has painted. What's your perspective there? JJ, if you go through the crime stats that are released by the Minister of Police every year, you can't expect schools to be immune from that kind of environment. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so we need to find a mechanism of ensuring that our law enforcement agencies do their work and that we need to ensure that parents don't donate their parental responsibilities to the educators uh, to say, now I know I'm bala little bona later. You can't do that. But also, we need to limit the free to air, <laughs> and I know I'm making a controversial statement here, where during prime time, television is about violence, is about guns, is about all other things. Uh, <laughs> So we need to find a collective way. And I don't want to blame society and exclude ourselves. We are to blame. But yeah. collectively, we need to tackle this thing of school violence. It's bad, JJ, if I have to use your word. It's bad. So we need to find a mechanism as parents, as community, yeah. as the education system. Are you saying that just to bolster security and so on, it's, it's, it's only dealing with the symptom, essentially? Yeah. But, and I don't, I'm not, I don't subscribe to that thought that if I have a budget, I must choose between having a security guard and, uh, with a donkey peer and a teacher. Yeah. I'll choose to be a teacher. Yeah. I'll choose to, 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 to employ a teacher because yeah. we are an education institution. In the first not, place. Yes. Yeah. Let those that need to deal with law enforcement play their part. But, but what is the cooperation between the police no, there is. and the education department, especially in dealing with hotspots? You've, you've mentioned earlier yeah. about uh, you know, equipment being stolen from the high-tech schools that you are now equipping. You know, you do one thing here. Then the other day, then I'm not sure what the incident was, but you threatened the school somewhere to say that we're not going to open the school again. I think they burned down the school, yeah. right? But it's a trend of having a situation where increasingly safety and security becomes a big issue that can, can, can in a sense, uh, you know, put a rock in your path. JJ, that's what I'm saying. The law enforcement agencies must move with times. I put a smart board and a tablet in a school. Mm. Someone breaks it, breaks in and take it. Mm. You call the police. We are tracking this thing. Mm. We know where it is. So, uh, they say, no, where's the case number? Go and open the case first. Oh, my goodness. So that they can. By the time you open the case, this thing is in the guy, uh, guy, uh, guy uh, outside the country. Yeah. So it's that kind of things that you feel that the law enforcement agency it is failing uh, you the, to a the, Yes, then. yes. The, uh, uh, but we are working better now. At yeah. least the new uh, uh, provincial commissioner of police in Dademawela is really working uh, smarter. Uh, yeah. uh, and 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 we believe we can. We've given them the 20 worst schools in Houghton so that. We, 
I don't run all over. Yeah. 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 We've given them the 20 West School, so they do raids, they check the school, they follow up the school. We've also identified potential uh, bullies, 5,000 of them. So we then take... As, 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 as in students? In students, yes. 5,000 of them. We take them to prison so that they can see that uh, if you continue with this behavior, this, this is, is where, where you end. Up. end. So it changes some of them. Uh, we do special workshop for them. So we're trying, but I can tell you, uh, school violence is not an education problem. It's a societal problem. Mm. And the sooner we assist each other, the better. And kita hi, Jacob. Let me tell you. Sure. At school? Amongst the, the kids? The easy availability of alcohol and yeah. drugs in this country is shocking. Uh, sure. and, 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 and there's no way we can beat about the bush. And I know people will justify it. No, uh, it creates jobs and other things, but it kills society as well. So we need yeah. to find and a way. And have we taken this up with economic development because they are the ones who are dishing out licenses for people who have shabins everywhere? I'm unpopular there. Uh, because... I really believe the lesser we issue licenses, the better. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. We can't be in a business of dishing out uh, licenses uh, the way we are. So they know me. I've spoken to them. I continue to. Uh, the lesser we do, the better. Okay. Then you'll have to come back because yeah, you know, you. I need to talk to you about some ANC matters. Okay. Including the Integrity Commission. You guys have rejected you know, the, the recommendations that says VBS mayors must be fired. Can you just deal with that. There's one minute left exactly. Give no, me no, a we've quick not, answer. We have not rejected that. We seek, we, we, we're saying we'll you seek counsel. It. We'll seek counsel from, from, counsel. from, yeah, from our national leadership. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Purely because, JJ, yeah. VBS is not a phenomenon of Gauteng at yeah. all. Uh, yeah. So if we take a posture as Gauteng, and some people say, check Gauteng has done what we yeah. want to do it this way. So it will yeah. create problems. Yeah. So if we seek counsel to our leaders to yeah. say, We've got this case, advise us. And but I what was your recommendation us. to them? What was your recommendation? No, no, no. Our recommendation is that uh, if out of the report that was given to us, yeah. no politician was found guilty, yeah. and there are officials who have created laws to say we've got delegated authority to make a way of attaining to this issue rather okay. than blaming one person and yeah, leave other yeah. person. Let's find everyone and attend to all these issues at the same time. But I think we'll find that counsel from our national leadership. Wonderful. Please do come back. Thank you so much, Bayanza, and, and all the best for the good work you continue Thank you to so do. Much. Thank you so much, JJ. And, Thanks and for the love with Salus. What's happening there? The beautiful bits. Yeah. yeah. They're playing very well. They're uh, playing well. Yeah, they're playing a, a net bank cup uh, on Friday at Opsonville Stadium. So those people that love this beautiful bit. They must come and see the, the beautiful <laughs> place lying high. Thank you. And Payaza, Payaza Le Sufi, the, uh, the MEC of Education. Uh, the last time I, 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 I you know, talked about Payaza, I said that, the, you know, the dogs, what is the phrase? Dogs don't bark at the, at the stationary. Yes. Man. And then I said, who are the other MECs of education in the country? Please come and talk to us. <laughs> and of course, the KZN MEC uh, uh, responded. The others are still Deaf mute. Oh, it doesn't mute is the way. Please, you know, want to talk education across the country. Newsroom Africa is an international station, not a regional outing <laughs> station. So please don't make us so regional. But at least over here, done KZN. And of course, thank you once again, Banyaza, for being here tonight. Thanks, my brother. Thank you. All right, we end early today, but stay tuned for the Africa Roundtable. That is. A, 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 a dialogue I had with refugees who are in a church in Cape Town. I was uh, conducting a dialogue with them, trying to make, to understand what their issues are. They have a memorandum, they want to move, the, they threatened to walk to Namibia. Right? It's an exclusive interview that we had there. We held this dialogue right in the middle of this church in Green Market Square in Cape Town to hear the side of the story. You can't miss it. But come and ready, standing by with the headlines and straight thereafter, we go straight into the dialogue. But until we talk frankly again, may God bless you.